All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Friday edition of Talk Back. John King over there, our show producer, and joining us in studio. And you thought he was just the chicken guy. <laughs> he is not, ladies and gentlemen. Jason Herndon, welcome, sir. Hey, thanks for having me, Peter. It's good to see you. Good to see you again. Now, you did not bring with you a big uh, a big box full of fried chicken. You mm. bought something very exciting. A box full of guns. Yeah. I, I, I wondered how you got all those fresh chickens. Now I know. All right, right. <laughs> <laughs> the secret's out. Yeah, there you go. All right. So, 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 so you guys go ahead. Yeah, well, okay. So, uh, Jason, uh, as you mentioned, we often get him every year for the, the double front chicken deal. Mm-hmm. This They're time he's, right? he's upped his game in many ways, uh, maybe to the biggest game of all, uh, other than the game of life. He's potentially going to the Olympics, Whoa! and he's working at getting to the Olympics in, 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 a, in a type of shooting, which I didn't even know was an Olympic event, because I'll be, Jason, don't cry or get embarrassed, <laughs> but it's really boring to watch. It is only 10 meters away from you, which right. I don't I know you don't shoot, Peter, but... Ten For most people 30, that shoot, it's thirty feet. It's not very far, right? Right, and you're shooting a lot at this at this distance, right? It's you get one hour to shoot. Is that right? Uh, hour and fifteen for air pistol. Yep. And you're shooting what? hundred shots? Sixty shots. Total. Just sixty. Shots. Yep. Sixty shots. So it's same shot, same shot, same shot, same shot for an hour and fifteen minutes. Now, <laughs> when you compete this, the gun that you're using, you know, we're talking about guns. This might be the least badass gun that I've seen. You're shooting pellets, first of all, right? Right. Right. So you're not talking about a big load. You're not going to take down a boar. You p- might not even be able to kill a chicken with it. Correct. It's just for shooting paper, right? It is. It's uh, it's a very it's accurate. Precision, it's it, precision shooting. It is precision shooting. Exactly. And at that level, it's amazing. Yes. I was looking at this gun. I'm the The grip he has on this. What, what, what is it? You, you just, the stuff that you put Bondo. on it. Bondo. Bondo. So you can see all the veins in his hand so he can line up perfectly. And then on top of that, he's got, he's got something that looks like it would go with a scuba diver's gear. And actually, you do load it with a scuba air tank, right? Yep, that's right. I charge the air cylinder that rests underneath the barrel uh, off a scuba tank. And there's an electrical switch on it. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's for, for someone that grew up shooting, uh, there was so much that I hadn't First of all, I look at this gun, I'm like, that's amazing. It doesn't make any sense with anything, any type of shooting I've ever done other than just target shooting, right? This really w- wouldn't exist unless there were Olympic tournaments. Right, right. correct. Now, uh, when it comes to these tournaments, you are going, I believe, to Germany, right? Correct. Now, when is that? Uh, I fly out the 24th of this month. That's my birthday. Oh, well, happy birthday, oh, really. Yeah, happy future birthday. <laughs> Give it to him. <laughs> right. 110, this is... I sent in his letter to the centenarian deal this this week. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I've got I've got smart ass all, all all over his forehead right there. So anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Your times are coming, pal. I hope so I hope may I live to 110. So uh, uh, so you're flying to Germany, but you don't ha- you didn't have a lot of warning that you were going to be going right. That's right. April 30th, I got the call from USA Shooting saying that we uh, opened up a World Cup. We selected two matches. You participated in. You're in the top five in the nation. Yeah. You're selected for uh, World Cup Germany. And can you fly out May 24th? Yeah, we've already shown the Germans how to shoot in two world wars. Now you're going to show them at the World Cup, right? Right. Now when it comes to when it comes to this particular challenge, you're top five right now. If you can get to top two at the next cha- uh, trial, yep. you'll go to the Olympics. Correct. At U.S. Olympic Team Trials, June of 2016, if I'm number one or two, I am headed to Rio de Janeiro. No. You know how cool that would be. I have. must. I must ask you: Is this all on your own dime? I mean, it has been so far. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, so, at, at what point will the U.S. Olympic Committee kick in and say we'll help you? So this is uh, uh, the beauty of getting towards the top of the heap and getting selected to go and shoot at a World Cup. Is I'm very close of being accepted onto the national team. So a good performance in Munich or a good performance next month at U.S. Nationals at Fort Benning, Georgia, uh, it's going to be my ticket to get on the national team. Then things are paid for. So I must, uh, I must ask you, what's the secret? Okay, when, when you're standing there and you're shooting for an hour, and a half, almost an hour and mm-hmm. a half, I mean, first of all, your arm's got to get tired. 
right? Or, and, unless you have like this rock solid mm. deal going on. So, I, are you allowed to rest? Are you allowed to go to the bathroom? What, what's the deal? Yeah. I, I, right. I don't know how this goes. That's diapers. that's a good point. Yeah. No. Did you it, raise the other hand? I gotta go. Be, be honest. Do you bring a diaper? <laughs> uh, well, it depends. But <laughs> oh, he stepped right into that Man. one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's what they call block time. So when they say start, you have 15 minutes for sighting and prep time. You can shoot as many shots as you want in that 15-minute period. After that 15-minute period has expired, they say, this is the start of your match, 60 record shots, hour 15 minutes, start. Oh. And that's it. Now, you can shoot as fast or as slow as you want, as long as you get all 60 shots in within that hour and 15. So sometimes uh, if I have a good rhythm going and things are going well, I'll, I'll stay up and keep shooting. Sometimes uh, I may have a little trouble, a mental block, um, and I need to sit down. I can take my hand out of the gun, put the safety flag in the chamber, and sit down in my chair, relax, drink a little water, close my eyes, kind of get refocus. realigned, right, right. refocus, and step back up. But now, the clock keeps ticking. Now, for those of us that it might be nerdy enough to care about this, if you've ever seen a pistol sh- uh, shooter, Peter, oftentimes when you're, you're shooting at cans or whatever, even tactical shooting, they'll, they'll stand facing the target, you know, dead center and... Have two hands on the grip. Yeah, the, weaver, like that. the weaver's stance, right? But uh, Herndon shoots sideways, and the reason why, and he drops his arm like this because he wants to use the big muscle because he's shooting so much during that period, right? To, right. That muscle's not going to tire as much during that time as the little muscles if he's holding it in front of it. Interesting. Um, so I, I just thought that was really fascinating. So, so there's strategy going on there, right? Now, before, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends. Uh, the uh, question I have, or the thing I wanted to bring up before we run out of this segment, uh, you are trying to get some money because it was so quick before you found out you were going to German Germany that for this World Cup challenge. And you're asking the public to kind of help you out on your endeavor, right? Right. Uh, I have a GoFundMe backslash Jason Herndon site set up to uh, help with the funding since it was such short notice. And with all the matches that I've been to uh, the last two years primarily, um, I have spent uh, pretty much everything. And my wife says I cannot put the kids for sale up on Craigslist. (laughs) And uh, how much are you asking? I, well, no. <laughs> well, hold on, we might have a deal here. <laughs> um, so I'm looking it, for some grandkids. <laughs> in the in the last two years, um, Fort Benning, Georgia, three times; the Olympic Training Center down in Colorado Springs, three times; wow. Phoenix, Arizona, um, and other small matches, preliminary tryout matches that have been all on my own dime, and I know I'm getting close. And when they hit me with this, I had to say yes, and it's been a scramble. So, How much do you need to raise? Well, between uh, Munich, Germany, and nationals of next month, and by then, either I'm on the national team or I'm, I'm looking for a different sport, <laughs> I'm looking for about uh, $4,500 total. And uh, I've had some very generous people already donate and anything helps uh, i love moral support too would you like some chicken i i would love some chicken right now would <laughs> so, you guys like some chicken all right <laughs> and we got to run listen all the best to you and uh, congratulations a new side of uh, of jason hurd this is really cool well thank you peter and it's, it's it's obviously a passion for you because you, you can tell you love it when you talk about it yeah so. if you make it to the olympics i promise to watch this entire competition Wonderful. If it's published, if, if it has, uh, if it's videoed, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I could, I, I could just see who's 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 the little guy from NBC that, that dyes his hair all the time. Uh, uh, I can't remember his name. Anyway. MSNBC, Chris Matthews. Uh, no, no, no. The, the, from NBC Sports, who oh. goes to all the Olympics. I can't yeah, you remember. know how much sports I watch. Anyway, <laughs> not much at all. I can see, And there's Jason Herz, and he's still hanging there. Still standing there. He's still He's shooting. standing there. He shot again. He's it's, still standing there. Again. Yeah, it's again. funny when they zoom in on one shooter. It's like, uh, is something wrong with the TV? It paused. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and nothing happens. And then finally you'll hear a, you yep, know, you and go. they put their arm down. All right. We got to run. Thanks, Jason. Guys, thanks for having best, me. Best of luck. We're going to take a break. Adam Hertz waiting on the phone. Uh, 721-1290 or 1-800-568-5309. We'll be right back. It would be Jason Herndon. He's bad to the bone. Yeah. All right. Seven two one twelve ninety. Bob Costas. Thank you, Kitty, for uh, for sparking our memory there. Yeah. Uh, one of the other cool things that we didn't get into 
Of the five that are going to this World Cup trial, three of them are from either Idaho or Montana, wow. real close by. Wow. So maybe in the future they can hold these stupid tournaments here <laughs> instead of flying them uh, to Georgia and <laughs> right, exactly. elsewhere in the country. Right. So. What, what I, I've been dying to ask him, if he's standing next to all the... I wonder if there's any mind or games that they play on I, each other. I think they go one at a time. Oh, they do they? Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Like, break a leg! Or something like <laughs> that. All right. But we've got Adam Hertz on the phone. And uh, Adam, uh, John did a fascinating story today regarding the, uh, the city council races that are coming up. And I think a lot of people might be really surprised because the city council has been, uh, if you will, staffed manned and womaned, if you will, by uh, some stalwarts over the many, many years, and looks like that's going to be changing. So first of all, welcome to the show. It's a, you're, you're a friend of Talk Back, and we appreciate you being on with us. What's going on on the city council right now? Well, thanks for having me, and um, I, don't, I, I can't really speak for anybody else about what's going on, but it appears as though there's going to be a pretty large turnover this year on city council. Um, so far, no incumbents have filed for re-election, so that means that there's the potential for six seats to be wide open this year. Man. Now, I know you can't say <laughs> what they want to say or what they think, but what is your best guess? Because I think, you know, this is a talk show. Opinions are okay. And you probably have the best opinion of all since you know these people and talk with them. Um, and obviously, you gave me your own kind of position earlier, which you, you can feel free to restate as well. But why do you think so many leaving at the same time is kind of surprising? You know, I, I think more than anything, it's kind of just life and, and timing. I mean, we have people on the city council like Jason Weiner, who's been there for two terms. Ed Childers, I think, is finishing up his fourth term. And prior to that, he was the, the city treasurer. Um, so there's just people that have been around for a while, and they're looking to retire. In other cases, I think people are getting busier with, with work. And Max Baucus it's, it's laughs at your city council two like terms. Job. I, I, I was going to say, Max Baucus would laugh at just two terms at city council. <laughs> I, I mean, this is the senator for 42 years. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, I get it. It just seems to me there's there's got to be something about the job or maybe there's a, you know, a move up politically or something. Well, allow me to jump in here for sure. just a second and say this. Uh, and, and Adam, in all deference to you and the good folks on the city council, because you guys work hard, you go to a lot of meetings, but I'm sorry, the pay sucks. I mean, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm sorry. It just... Uh, to, for all the work that, even though people think, oh, they just got to go to a meeting once a week, you know, on Monday night, so oh, they go all that much. Well, that's nonsense. Well, if you watch those meetings, not even everyone goes to all the meetings. I know, but but but, but still, but still, you guys, uh, could, could you just describe a week in the life of a city council member? Well, I guess first I'd take issue. I, I'd say that the, the pay doesn't suck. I think I think our city council members are overcompensated, and certainly on a statewide basis. Okay. There compensated better than any other city council well well you, well, well you would know better and so um, go ahead and, and i think you know a large part of it is, is that it's public service and you know serving your civic duty so I, I don't think the pay should be relevant although it's an important piece to the puzzle because there's a lot of people that couldn't serve on city council if there wasn't some pay involved because you're giving up you're giving up time elsewhere sure. but um you know the the average week can really vary it can be really minimal at times. It can be just a few hours of going to committee meetings and the Monday night general meeting. And then, you know, we can get into budget season and, you know, kind of depending on how involved you are in that and, and what committees you serve on, uh, you know, you could be at 15, 20 hours. Well, now, now, let me ask you this. Are you, are you assigned to committees or do you volunteer to be on committees? You can volunteer to be on committees. You can be on as many or as, or as few as you want to. And when I first started, I wanted to learn as much as I could, and I was on every single committee. And uh, I'm no longer on, on every committee because I found that there are certain committees that are not particularly co contentious and, and maybe my skill sets are not real strong on those committees. And so I just let other people do that work. Interesting. Well, we got to go to a break. When we get back, um, it seems to me, if I were you, which I'm not, and that everyone's <laughs> thankful for that. But <laughs> I, I would probably struggle every day with the feeling that what I was able to do on city council was limited and uh, almost fruitless, that I would have a, a feeling that I couldn't achieve much from that position. I don't know. Maybe you feel the same way. Maybe you don't. Maybe we'll talk about it after the break. Stay with us. And when do you want to give away some coffee there? Oh, young fella? Boy, you know, that sounds really good because I'm chowing down on this donut. <laughs> I might even have to get some uh, coffee during the break. Yeah, All we right. have free coffee and toast to give away from the Rocket Coffee coffee stand. 
there in the Garden City Garden Supply. The first caller at the number 721-1290 yeah. will get free coffee, there it goes. free toast, and your choice of spread. All right, go for it. We'll be right back after this quick timeout, and Adam Hertz will stay with Thanks us. For And we're back on Talkback, and it's Friday. 721-1290 is our number. John King over there, a show producer. I'm Peter Christian, and Adam Hertz, a city councilor, Ward 4, is with us. So I uh, asked I have Facebook listeners, why do you think the incumbents appear to be leaving Missoula City Council? <laughs> uh, Doc Schultz Heights uh, says, I shouldn't be doing the last name, sorry, Doc. Uh, Doc says, uh, easy answer. They've done all the damage they possibly could. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Oh wow! Uh, Ouch. And I, I, as I said before, I think my if I were to be leaving city council, it would probably be because I felt like I couldn't achieve that much from that position, uh, just because of the way Missoula is structured uh, in such a way that there's a lot of power invested in the mayor. Um, a lot of that power is taken away. It seems to me from a very wide city council with so many members and so little power. What do you think, Adam? Well, in some some senses, that's true. We do have a strong mayor system, and the and the mayor has uh, quite a bit more power than I, I think the mayor should have personally. But um, you know, I, there's there's plenty the city council can do. I've really been a a minority to say the least. I'm the only conservative on a 12 member body. Um, well, forget but, it, Adam. You, know, you, you, you listen, man. You've been the Lone Ranger ever, ever since Dick Haynes uh, retired. <laughs> really? Yeah. You, and, you know, and I think there's whether whether you know John's probably right in a legislative sense as as the Lone Ranger. I, there's not a lot, not a lot that I can move forward in terms of an agenda or, or making reforms or making changes. But certainly, I've taken upon myself to to be the voice that, that brings things to the attention of the public because, uh, you know, I have a strong feeling that if I w- was not there, a lot of things would just kind of fly through without a lot of public notice or, or public involvement. And so I think that's largely been what I've been able to contribute. But certainly, you know, if there was a more balanced uh, political makeup on the council, uh, I think there is a lot that well, can be done. Well, but, uh, well, now's the chance, man. I mean, if, if, if all these incumbents are not running, uh, I, I think this would be a, a call if, if there are folks out there who feel, you know, like you do, Adam, that there needs to be more fiscal conservatism or perhaps a, a different voice uh, on the city council. This, I think this is a great opportunity to, to get involved and make your voice heard. Now, is, is, is that right or not? Absolutely. Now is the time. The candidate filing for this year's election, which takes place in the fall, uh, candidate filing opened on May 4th, and it runs through July 2nd. And like I said, it appears as though there's going to be uh, open seats in every ward, but there will certainly be elections in every ward, regardless of whether or not any, any incumbents file for re-election. So I'd really encourage people to get on the county website, uh, in the elections website, there's a ward map, and you can find out what ward they they live in, and certainly people are welcome to call me or, or contact me via email or, or Facebook or Twitter or however they want to contact me and ask me questions about what it's like to, to run for city council, what it's like to serve on city council, and I'm, I'm happy to help and I think, in the I right th- direction. I think it's, it would be a real good encouragement to you, too, if you've ever thought you might want to get into politics, but maybe you love politics from, as a casual outside observer. Um, this is a great opportunity to try your hand at it. First of all, it's a winnable race. You know the size of your ward. Only the people in your ward are going to be voting for you, right? Right. So you can go door to door, meet the people. You can do the old-fashioned kind of politics you think that people still do. <laughs> Maybe you, you're, if you're numb to the flyers and the <laughs> commercials and stuff like that, it's not likely going to be one of those kinds of races. The other thing is, because there's no incumbents, you don't have a natural disadvantage. For starting out in a race. Everybody will be equally unknown. <laughs> right. So, it, you know, there's a lot of power for people that want to try their hand at politics. And, and you know, frankly, a lot of the people that don't get into politics are the people that should. And a lot of people that get into politics are the people that shouldn't. I mean, a lot of people out there have good business acumen and a sense for uh, what could and shouldn't be done by government. And they never get into it because they find themselves disliking it so much. Well, and another thing is they're too busy making a living. Now, right, is, right. is that another reason, Adam, why more people don't file? Yeah, I think so. But, you know, it, it's it's just, in my opinion, part of your civic duty. And it's something that I stepped up and I made a sacrifice for four years. And I've enjoyed it and it's been well worth it. And I'm not ready to continue that at this time. But I'd encourage other people to do the same thing because it's, 
It's really, really important. It's as local and as on the ground and as close to home uh, as you can imagine. Um, so it's just a really important office. It's important that we do have business-minded folks and fiscally conservative folks and people that will push back against the reckless agenda that's been pushed through Missoula City Council and through the mayor's office for years and years. And I think now's the time for, for people to step up and make that sacrifice. And, and, you know, I think it's just really important that 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 we have people do that. I'm just going to ask a question out loud. And Adam, you don't have to answer it. But uh, I, I would love to get input from the rest of the folks in our audience. How much of this, because to me this is shocking that all these people would be stepping down at once, how much of this has to do with mountain water and what the mayor has done to bring the city into the condemnation lawsuit and the millions of dollars that have been spent and the fact that that question is still up in the air, uh, uh, whether the city wins or not, and the tax increases and all. I'm just, I'm just curious, what do you think, our talkback audience, do you think this has been, again, we're all just speculating, it's just opinions, do you think this has been a trigger to, to, to say, you know what, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so anyway, 721-1290 is our number. We'll be right back. Yeah. All right, 721-1290 is our number. That's uh, John King over there. I'm Peter Christian. Adam Hertz joining us on the phone, and he's going to be stepping down, uh, not running for re-election uh, at, uh, in Ward 4. Now, you and I were talking off air. I, I, I asked the question. Um, I wonder how many, just asking out loud, thinking out loud, how many of these people who are not running for re-election are doing so because of what's happening with the city and the condemnation process and the lawsuit against Mountain Water. And so I, I asked you that question, and you, you gave me a very interesting response. Yeah, I mean, my view is that this year, if you were running as a pro-condemnation candidate, you'd have a, a, an uphill battle, without a doubt. I mean, I think that the public's getting worn out uh, over this lawsuit, uh, you know, we're arguably, possibly not even really halfway into it, considering all of the appeals that could go on. You know, it costs millions and millions of dollars that, that we don't have to spend. And so I think anybody who's running as a pro-condemnation candidate has a real uphill battle, for sure. But I think that there's a level of arrogance within sitting city council members and the mayor's office that they just don't understand that. They really think that the public is largely behind this condemnation effort. The public largely supports them, and so I don't think that that, that has in any way scared people out of the race. Well, Adam, if but you I, do polls and then take out all the polling voice data that is opposed to you, then apparently you get the results you need. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know... <laughs> a rousing if, endorsement. <laughs> if, if you don't vote, it's automatically a yes, right? Right. Wow. So uh, we got to have to let you go here yeah. shortly. One of the things I did want to bring up, though, before we left is the cost of running for this particular position is not that high. Uh, I think it's like 140 bucks uh, to, to, to throw and, your hat in the ring. And 23 cents. <laughs> you think you. 140 <laughs> bucks and 23 cents. And that's based off of a percentage of what you might earn in the position. Yeah. But, I mean, seriously... Uh, you could you could get into this race for pretty cheap. There's one of the wards that doesn't even have uh, someone running yet. Yeah. So you'd be a shoe in. <laughs> uh, so I, I definitely recommend to uh, anybody out there. That you could have a debate against yourself. Yeah. And I don't even care if you if you're if you're totally opposed to me on everything, uh, in in the way you think about politics. I think it's better if we have more competitors out there so people have a, a list of items to choose at the buffet. Yeah, and, and the nice thing is that whenever there's an election like this, we try to have as many of these candidates on talk back, so you can ask questions and they can make their voices heard. So, anyway. Well, listen, Adam, we have taken up enough of your valuable time, sir. Thanks so much, and we look forward to being a, to being a friend of talk back even after you're off the city council, okay? You bet. Thanks for having right. me. Take care, sir. All right, that's Adam Hertz. All right. All right, 721 one I asked the question, I guess... Nobody wants to answer it. What was your question? Oh, I just, uh, I, how many of you think uh, that they're not running because of the mountain water deal? Yeah, I, according, I, according I, to I Adam, then I guess not. I don't think that that would be that big of a hurdle. I, I don't know. There's something that really shook things up. Caitlin Koppel steps down. Right. And then it was like dominoes, you know. Um, but I, I, I think what I said earlier has a lot to do with it. I mean, even if you're... Uh, if I don't know. I haven't. I haven't talked to directly with Caitlin about it, but some of the others. I mean, uh, you're not able to change things in the direction you might want to very easily from that position. You know, to start off with. 
But one of the things that I have to give huge accolades to Adam for, uh, frankly, there were many big articles that hit the newspapers that would never have happened if something didn't happen during a city council meeting that was a question that Adam started. Right. You know, uh, everything from the mayor taking his own raise, taking away a raise after he said he wouldn't, which never actually got to the newspaper because for some reason they didn't want to run that story. Uh, or or other things that uh, have happened to city council. A lot of it wouldn't have happened without Adam's involvement. So, so anyway, but uh, I want the, 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 let's put it this way. If there are no conservative voices on the city council. There's no balance. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's... Man, that, that, that's, that's got to be tough. It's a little top heavy. Anyway, 721-1290 is our number, 1-800-568-5309. We have open phones from now until 10 o'clock. We have all sorts of things we can talk about. I really want to talk about this lawsuit at the city council, or sorry, the, uh, uh, the sheriff's, sheriff's department. department. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we'll I, I have all sorts of, of information to share with you about that, having done quite a bit of research on it. And uh, from both sides, by the way, uh, 721-1290 is our number. We'll be right back. Hey, we're back on Talkback, 721-1290. All of a sudden, we've got a caller. So let's get right to the phones and jump right in here with Susan. Good morning, Susan. What's on your mind? Well, the city council of Missoula has always been ultra-liberal, which actually reflects most of the voters in Missoula. You and I probably both know that it's very difficult to be a conservative in Missoula. Um, and with that said, I live in the county, so I would never, you know, be able to even talk to the city council, let alone run, and nor would I be interested. Um, I think some of the smartest and most helpful people that would have the ability to run and do a great job on the city council would probably never run for any political political office, and, you know, the people that we hear from on your show that call in are so intelligent and so logical, and those would probably be the exact opposite of the people who would run for any political office, because I'm personally convinced that no matter which party you happen to represent as a politician, when you get elected, it seems like a lot of politicians lose their brain. <laughs> okay. And it's serious. I mean, it's really like, holy cow, I voted for you. I campaigned for you. I donated to your campaign. And when you get elected, you do just the opposite of what you campaigned about. Yeah, I, I don't know, Susan. I, I, Thanks, you know, Susan. I, I, I wish that the most intelligent out among us out there actually had the impulse to serve their country in such a way. I mean, honestly, well, if, if God gave you the brain and the acumen to handle this sort of thing for the good of your city, your state, and your country, go ahead and try your hand at politics and, and, and do something about it. Was, it was originally called public service for a reason, because, you know, because you know, the, the original citizen, citizen legislator was someone who put aside their busy, you know, whether it was a farm or a ranch or a business or whatever they did, so to go to Washington or Helena or whatever to, to serve their, for, for a term or whatever, for a short term, and then they would, they would hand that off to somebody else and go back to their, go back to their life. That, that was the essence of public service. But it's not that way anymore. I mean, uh, without term limits, you got people like Max Baucus, who's in the Senate for 42 years, for heaven's sake. Anyway. Yeah. And uh, whether you think he did a good job or not, but 42 years, that's, I'm sorry, that's insane. Yeah. But it's anyway. a long time. So uh, you, wanted, you were making a point. Well, one of the things that we brought up kind of during the break, you had raised that question about how much do you think the city water right. lawsuit has to deal with this? And I kind of, pooed it but thinking a little bit more about it there is one possible scenario where this could play a lot into it all right as you brought up i mean we thought we were going to hear about the results from the city water trial four weeks ago right, right? it's yeah. been a long time it has been quite a while uh, all judge, the paperwork judge, judge townsend has had this she's had all of the uh associated paperwork and i've checked on this almost every day uh since april 23rd all of the all of the uh the paperwork was in quite a while ago. Right. Um, so she must really be trying her, she must really be working through the material to come to a, a conclusive answer. And my best guess is, I think a lot of people thought it would be an easy answer for her. Right. And that she should have been going quick and it would have been in the city of Missoula's favor. I think the longer this 
court case takes, the less likely, likely it looks like it would be in the city of Missoula's favor. And when I say the city of Missoula, I mean uh, the, the people that sued for it. I actually think it would be not in the city of Missoula's favor right. to right. win this lawsuit. But right. whatever. Let's move along. Let's get uh, Brian on the line. Hi, Brian. Hey, uh, how are you guys doing? What's up? Uh, well, you know, Peter, I was, uh, in response to your thing, I think it has a lot to do with the mountain water lawsuit. I've uh, had some contact with people at work at Mountain Water, and, uh, you know, I'm getting their side of the story, but it's just been ridiculous. And personally, if I served on the city of Missoula Council, I'd be embarrassed to tell anybody. <laughs> and if I ever ran for political office outside of that, I would not use it as an accolade. Because the city of Missoula is so messed up, the sidewalk issues, the turnabout issues, it's just been one mistake after the next, and all they've done is spend a lot of money. And that's why I no longer live in Missoula. I, I moved. <clears throat> Well, that's what well, so I wouldn't have to deal with. Well, it. It, I, and again, I, I appreciate what you're saying. But what, I don't. But, I think you should go be Jeremiah, voice in the wilderness. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 I'm, what I was going to say is that <laughs> you're just the kind of person that needs to run for city council and represent your viewpoint. Because obviously, whoever your city councilor was, because you have two, if, if you're in a ward in Missoula, there are six wards and 12 city councilors. Uh, right. you know, one, one of those people hopefully would have represented your views. Obviously, they did not. They did not. I, I I moved to Missoula. Or excuse me, Lolo. Okay. I'm not. You know, I still work in Missoula. Yeah. But uh, I just got out of the. You know, and it's amazing at how much more conservative Lolo is, ten miles away, <clears throat> in comparison uh, to Missoula. And I just every time you turn around, I was dealing with a, some liberal <laughs> person that I disagreed on their views with. All right. Well, thanks for the call, sir. I appreciate it. All right, well, I do appreciate you guys uh, suggesting people get out there to run, and maybe we can get some good people in there. Sounds good. Thanks for the call. Susie, you're on TalkBack. Hi. Hello, Hi Peter. Hello Susie. What's I'm up? I'm here. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I, well, a couple of things. Of course, uh, you know, I had a, a very infamous uh, four years on the county commission. There's a several things that I'd like to address. One is uh, one of my roles was working um, on the transportation uh relationship with Missoula County and also um, some of the city issues. And I got to tell you, um, I disagree with your, or I agree with your many callers who say this is such a violation of what this country is based on. Um, and this government takeover of business in general is so um, harmful to our society. Now, and hold, 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 hold on, Susie. In, in what uh, way? You say the takeover of business. In what way are you talking about? Well, the the right to own property, the right to have a, a, a business entity, and the freedom to run it under the laws that, that guide you is a huge part of what America was founded on. People who immigrate here today still look at it as a the place of opportunity, and every time a government entity decides to swallow up a private industry, mm. it's an assault on that very, I see very important we're, we're not really, uh, I mean... That's exactly explicitly what's happening with the mountain water lawsuit, right? It's the yeah. government trying to take over a private, really run water system. I'm sorry. John I was just giving an example oh. of what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. And, and so from that point of view, I agree. I think it's um, an embarrassment. But when you deal with the city of Missoula in particular, although somewhat with the county as well, it is, and no surprise with the university, I think it's so liberal and you see so much waste. We a good example is in just the transportation. The the county uh, ha hired a local entity to do a study on bike uh, path usage in the county. Uh, and at the and I actually I believe this was uh, part of the city, not even the county. It's been a couple years since this happened. But at the end of the year, when they were to present their findings. They had no findings after spending a very large amount of the taxpayers' dollars because they had the first question is, well, what was your baseline to start, you know, to come with these conclusions, which were very vague? Oh, well, we didn't have a baseline. And so immediately everyone on the council was able to say, well, how in the world is that a viable study if you didn't determine what the use was at the beginning of the study and then you to measure if there was an increase or decrease over a year. And that money was just wasted. There was no oversight by the government in Missoula who paid out 
to have that study done, and apparently no guidelines given to start it. Mm. And that kind of waste happens in a lot of counties and cities. Uh, and, you know, I see it happen in the city of Hamilton all the time, things that are absolutely against the principles of, of our free market society. Well, we saw, the, that, we saw that recently with the water trial. The yeah. city council allowed the mayor to use one particular law firm. Right. He goes off, gets a different law firm that wasn't approved by city council. They go and pay for a uh, poll to be done in the city of Missoula that asks questions in such a way, this came out in court, where it was clearly they were trying to influence the outcomes of the questions and then yep. come back and say, look, they support you. <laughs> it's- Listen, that is, you know, John, that's the science that's used for everything today by the neo-environmentalists, the, the progressive party is... You have an outcome that you need to prove. What did and what you skew what, all of the information called confirmation that, bias? Yeah, it's confirmation the same problem bias, right. that uh, Krakauer was faced by that, yeah. and he admitted yeah. to yeah. when he was faced yeah. by the quote heckler. Hey, incident. Susie, we're up against a break, dear. Thanks okay. for your call. Tell people to run. You got it. That it's worth it. But get out after four years. There should be term limits on everything. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. We're going to take a one-minute break. Uh, we're almost out of time. We have eight minutes left. So if you want to tackle the lawsuit, we can. Uh, I kind of want to. We, we, we can start in on yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, uh, we have one minute of time. I will be right back. Uh, the thrill is gone. B.B. King passed away last night to uh, his home in Las Vegas. And, uh, but I understand Lucille and his music lives on. All right. So R.I.P. to one of the greatest musicians of all time, B.B. Uh, King. Actually, he performed... Here in Missoula several years ago, and in case you didn't get a chance to see that, wow, uh, you know, just unbelievably talented, uh, a sweet, wonderful, you know, guy. Anyway, so uh, RIP to B.B. King. 721-1290 is our number, 1-800-568-5309. And John is uh, talking with someone on the phone right now. We're going to get that person on. Uh, yeah, we'll get, we'll get you on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who, who do we got? I have a lot of people are talking, maybe not. Oh, it was Jeannie, and she wanted to thank Adam Hertz for his service. Oh, so there you go. Okay, real quickly, we have like six minutes, so let me just do this. Uh, D- Deputy Paige Pavilon, Missoula City uh, County Sheriff's Office, uh, was fired, and now she has uh, uh, sued the uh, Sheriff's Department, County Attorney, and the Human Resources Department. And if you listen to our newscasts, you know her fairly well because she was frequently referred to because her job was the public information officer. Exactly. The the reason she was fired, uh, uh, we we got a news release from uh, Brenda Bassett, who was the new public information officer, who talked about the reason why she was let go. And I'll just go ahead and quote here. Uh, And I quote, Deputy, this was provided by the Sheriff's Department, Deputy Pavilon was terminated April 13th for conduct disclosed and statements made during an internal investigation into the February 2015 arrest of a co-worker. The Sheriff and County Attorney's offices have determined her ability to serve as a witness in the criminal justice system had been compromised by her actions, and the County Attorney placed Deputy Pavilon's name on what is called a Brady List. It means there's an evidence affecting the credibility of law enforcement officer as a witness because they knowingly lied in an official capacity. Based on violations of her oath of office, the law enforcement code of ethics, and the likelihood she would be impeached as a witness upon disclosure by the prosecutor that her name appears on a Brady list, the sheriff determined that Pavilone can no longer effectively serve in the capacity of deputy sheriff. So that was the news release of her firing. All right. Now, uh, not long after that, uh, we had a chance to visit with Josh Van Der Wettering. I think we should also mention the county attorney's office also chimed in on that with right. the Brady issue. Right. Yeah. So it wasn't just the one department. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I had a chance to visit with uh, Josh Van Der Wettering, who is, uh, who is Pavilone's attorney, and they filed the, uh, uh, the lawsuit not in Missoula, but in Lewis and Clark County. And your city got upset about that. They sent out a press release yesterday exactly, saying, well, we don't understand why they didn't file in Missoula. This was Steve Carey, who is representing the Carey Law Firms, representing the, uh, the, the county, actually, who said at a press release that, quote, she has filed her suit in the wrong county. The county attorney, the sheriff, and the human resources director all live in Missoula, as does Ms. Pavilone. I'm quoting now, uh, quoting here, we have no idea why she filed her complaint in Helena, end quote. Well, Got on the phone with Josh Van Der Wettering, and uh, here's, he, he explained why she decided to, uh, uh, why, I'm sorry, why he decided to uh, file a suit at Lewis and Clark County. I filed in Lewis and Clark County. 
Clark County because the law allows you to do that. Um, to file when you're filing against the state or one of its political subdivisions, uh, you can file in that county or in Lewis and Clark County. I chose to file in Lewis and Clark County. Now, he, he, Van der Ruttering is very careful to emphasize the fact he has great respect for the judges and courts in Missoula County with this caveat. The Missoula courts, obviously, work very closely with the Missoula County Attorney and the Missoula Sheriff. And because of that closeness, you know, the judges would probably have to recuse themselves anyway. And so I decided just to go ahead and file directly to Lewis and Clark County instead of having those issues in Missoula. Now, if you want to read the complaint, the complaint in its entirety is on our website uh, on the news story. It's like 41 pages. It is 41 pages long. I read most of it this morning. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of interesting stuff in there. There certainly is. And it goes deep into the weeds of things that go on inside the Sheriff's Department. Let me bring up one of the interesting things. All right. The One of the things that starts out right in, I think, page three or four, the issue of promotions and demotions after the new sheriff took over. So when T.J. McDermott came into office uh, in the, in the uh, document, the complaint, uh, she lists them by name, individuals that supported the sheriff, getting promotions quickly, jumping up rank, past sergeant, past whatever, to higher levels. And then people that were opposed to him getting demoted in rank specifically, and she makes the case, or her attorney makes the case, that Pavalone was not only demoted to uh, aggressively, but she had faced even more oppression than the, her male peers that were also. Right. And uh, it's, so it's, it's, kind, of a, it's kind, of a, kind of a scary thing to think about. Keep in mind, too, that whenever somebody files, a, I'm trying to be fair, okay? Yeah. I'm trying to be fair. When somebody files a lawsuit like this, everything you're going to read in that complaint is very subjective. Here's, here's what they did to me. Here's what they did to me. Here's what they did to me. And it's wrong, 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 wrong. Okay? Now, we won't be able to hear both sides of this until Court. it goes to trial, right? Okay, which is going to be in Helena. Well, and let me say too, we've had almost all these people, both Jason Johnson, who's on one side of this, right, and and Paige Pavlone were both public information officers. I know them well, yeah. and I like both of them. Yeah, they're both they were both excellent at their job. We've had almost all of these people in studio <laughs> at one time or another, and okay. they all seem like great, decent people. But for some reason, there's something at the sheriff's department in the water or in the know. air that just gets everybody riled up, and there's this antagonism that's yeah. unbelievable. Okay, real quickly, at the close of the document, Pavalone asks the court for damages and an amount to be proven at trial, reasonable attorney's fees and costs, cost of the suit, and such other relief as this court may deem just. That's actually how it ends. Now, uh, uh, to end on a positive, joyful note, if I may, Okay, uh, Brenda Bassett, who is the new public information officer, uh, I believe either has given birth or is about to give birth to a child. And so we just want to wish her and her family the best and welcome that new baby. And hopefully, I don't know if, if a new baby and the family can bring peace and healing. I don't know. But uh, to be honest with you, th this is my sheriff's department like it's your sheriff's department. And I want things to get work out. So they can get back to work and stop messing with all this stuff. And delivering babies while you're the public information officer seems to be a theme because Paige uh, she also was pregnant had a just, I think, a year exactly. or so ago. All right. So, so anyway, uh, you guys have a wonderful weekend. Congratulations to all the graduates.